what you are looking at here could be, in fact, a replica of a school locker. It could also be a phone booth from England. Or maybe it's the monolith from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey with doors on the front. No, in fact, it's none of that. This is the IBM Executary 214 Dictation Unit. It is a 1961 model, and it plays a 4-inch tape ribbon, or tape belt, and uh, it is preceded by the 224 Dictation Unit, which is here, and you can see they did a lot to make it even more portable than it already was. As you can see by my hands here on this one, this thing is actually pretty big for something that's portable. And then as I held this one, I can hold it in one hand with no problem. You can see the 224 dictation unit on my channel. I have like, I think two videos about this one. One how to use it and one how I restored it. This thing was a pain in the neck to get working again. I almost had to re-engineer the thing inside to get it to work. So the curiosity for me is, why was this one so easy to get working? It was almost like it was built better. Well, I think it was built better because this one, although it needed a belt, the belt was still there. In the 224 dictation unit, the belt had disintegrated, was gone. In fact, the uh, one of the pulleys that the belt connected to crumbled and fell apart when you touched it. But this guy was made a lot better. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to demonstrate that there was a, a recording that came with it. And I'm going to play that for you. And uh, it's kind of interesting. It will take you back if you've uh, been alive since the early 60s. And it'll take you back even if you haven't been alive that long. I certainly haven't. So if you open up the door on the front, you have your controls on the uh, panel here. You have your off, listen, and record. And you have a reverse button here that actually does play in reverse. Now, on the 224 unit, it just makes it jump back a little bit. But this one actually turns the tape in a, in a reverse fashion. Although you can't hear it, you will, uh, you will definitely uh, go back a few seconds or so. Your volume control is here. And then your scale, I guess, that, uh, that you use to find a particular point in the recording is here, like an index. And uh, there's a removable piece of paper here that goes behind it. And that piece of paper can be marked by pressing this or this, and it puts little holes in the paper to indicate the beginning and end of a particular dictation. So like I said, the, uh, the smaller unit plays a three inch belt. This one plays a four inch belt. It operates on five C batteries. On the side, we have a control panel that opens up on the side. Here's our microphone, which can also double as a speaker. And believe it or not, this still works. Had no problem with it at all. I'm just going to go ahead and unravel it with the wire there. And if we look in the side panel here, you can see we have a, uh, a headphone jack there. We have a speaker mic choice, whether we want to listen through the through the actual microphone or through the internal speaker. We have a dictate and a conference here, which I'm not entirely sure what that does. Uh, I guess you record by yourself or record a whole bunch of people. You have your foot switch here, which also is the uh, place to hook this microphone. And there's an auxiliary power input here. I learned very quickly that the unit will not operate unless something is plugged in here. So you either have to have your foot switch plugged in or you have to have the microphone plugged in to get the unit to operate. On the side here, you have um, a handle just for extra portability. You can carry it around with you. And then right here, we have a panel that opens up and inside are your C batteries. The unit is made out of metal, not plastic. So of course that adds to the weight of the item. To load your tape in, you go around on this side and there's a button you depress down here at the bottom and it opens up like the hood of a car. 
And here's what's inside. So on the top lid, move the camera up here. On the top lid, you have a, a little built-in buzzer that buzzes when there's no tape inside. I think it's supposed to buzz at the end of the tape too, but it, I can't get it to do that. You have your speaker, and then uh, on the other side of this is a level meter that's supposed to show you your battery uh, level, whether your batteries are low or not. Moving down into the unit here, the biggest point of failure for this unit, of course, was the belt. And the belt is right here. It had a flat belt in it, and I couldn't find one at my local electronics store, so I ended up using a more of a square size belt. And I put a little bitty plastic thing on the end to keep it from popping off. But uh, when I first turned it on, it was uh, kind of like waking it up from the dead. The motor just like didn't want to turn at all. And after just letting it run for a while, it took off, and uh, the motor has worked ever since, amazingly enough. If you turn it this way, you have, uh, this is the actual belt right here, the, the magnetic belt that's, you know, it's basically a big, gigantic piece of magnetic tape. And then you have um, your amplifier circuitry over here. This is your record and playback head that runs across a bar here. You can see it moving across there. So it has linear tracking. There is a uh, turn screw here that turns with the motor and moves the head across the tape. To load the magnetic tape in here, you lift this up, you grab a hold of your tape here, and pull it out. It does have the, the IBM uh, name on the side of the tape there runs along the side and it's supposed to load this way with the IBM name here and then there's a little window that you can look through on there to see that the uh, the unit is turning and see that you have the tape loaded in there so you can see the logo and then you can see the yellow and the black squares appearing there but for some reason whoever owned this did not decide to load the tape properly so the tape material that I'm going to play you is on that side of it. So it's very simple to operate. If you want to listen to your recording, you flip that to listen. If you want to record, you flip it to record. And you're ready to go. So uh, let me demonstrate that for you. I'm going to play the full length of this dictation that's on here because it's just kind of cool. And you can hear the quality of a recording that was made, um, what, almost 50 years ago? Maybe it was 50 years ago. So uh, let's open this up again. And there's a little catch that's over here that I keep running into. I'll move it out of the way for now. All right. So sit back and relax and listen to a recording made a long time ago. And uh, be amazed at how something that old could still be preserved and still work. Um, 
and either barbecue beef or quartered chicken. Um, ice cream and cookies, milk, and coffee. Uh, the ice cream, milk, and coffee to be uh, self-service, the same as the buffet. In other words, we would not serve it. Well, and get it. As understood, Mr. Banker, this would be served in one of the dining halls at the university. And we would use the university's tables and chairs. I bring this point out because at the price I am going to quote, we could not provide chairs or tables. Uh, you would have to secure permission for us to make coffee and possibly heat some few items there. Uh, we will say that approximately four burners of a stove would suffice. Uh, I would need about four or five of the university boys to assist, but I will make these arrangements with the fellow over at the student center. For a crowd of 400, the minimum figure, the minimum price would be 175 per person. I'll make sure, Gene, that he understands that this is a guarantee of 400. If your crowd, for instance, was only 300, we would have to charge $2 per person. At 350, well, we could, for this same buffet and same type of service, uh, to uh, 190. of 175 per person is as low as we can go on this type of service. I hope that I have answered your questions regarding this. If there, or if you would desire a change addition to the menu as quoted, we would be happy to discuss it with you. Um, we would be happy. At your convenience, uh, within the next two weeks, uh, preferably, uh, I hope that we can finalize this with you. Um, I will be down there March the 5th, 6th, and 7th. If perhaps you would like to finalize this in person rather than by mail. Uh, it's been nice dealing with you so far. Hope that I have given you the information that you seek. And we'll certainly do everything that we can to make this year's freshman formal memorable to all who attend. So there you heard a letter from Willard Sellers from 1964. Hope that was enjoyable for you, just to take you back in time there. And uh, that's basically it with this unit, as far as the way it works and the way it operates. I was able to make my own recording on it, play that for you, and it's on the other there really isn't another side of this tape. There shouldn't be, but for some reason there is. I guess whoever, somebody had this before me and tried to get it working because there's a, re a test recording made on the other side here. It's made after my recording. So I'll play you the one I played, which is just my being ridiculous when I'm trying to test something. There is a tracking control here in case the headline is different.
for a particular record or tape. One, two, three. This is a test, and we are not doing anything but counting in circles because that's what the other guy said he was doing. So um, this is just a test, and uh, feel free to break your arm. Goodbye. And then there's another guy on here. He's about here, I think. Somewhere in here. about that well i appreciate your time and uh, i hope you enjoyed this this uh, uh trip down memory lane for methods that were used in offices to dictate letters and a secretary would have a a tabletop model of this particular machine and she would put the tape in her unit or he would just hand this unit to her and she could he or she could listen to the tape and actually write a letter type out a letter using the uh, audio that's on the tape. And the tapes can be folded up and put in an envelope and mailed, which is uh, kind of interesting. And um, they were um, stored in little envelopes as well. So uh, you can uh, see more of this type of thing on my channel. And uh, again, you can see the 224 dictating unit on my channel and what it took to get that fixed. Please subscribe, leave a comment, like the video, share it with a friend, and I appreciate you uh, taking your time today. Have a good day.